Hello everyone and welcome. Glad you could join me for another project back here at the bench today. What are we going to do today? Today's fun project is going to deal with this thing. What is it? I'm going to tell you in just a moment. Okay, so we're back. So, what are we going to do with this today? Actually, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a whisper quiet, whisper quiet, super ultra quiet compressor. And it starts with this right here. This little unit is the compressor out of a refrigerator. Believe it or not, this is the compressor in your refrigerator, tucked deep inside the bowels of your refrigerator. This one came out of a mini fridge. So the ones for a full-size refrigerator are going to be a little bit bigger, but not by much. They generally all fill up the same amount of space, volume, and so forth. And uh, it's a closed unit. So all it has to do is basically circulate the Freon inside the coils, and that's what cools off your refrigerator. But I'm sure you have been in your kitchen and had a conversation with your family, and you were not blasted out of the kitchen by a whole lot of noise, because these are very, very quiet. And I'm going to show you that in a minute, just how quiet they are with a noise meter. And it'll show you I'm actually talking louder than this thing will make a noise right now. Now, this can be used in many different ways. Like I said, this came out of a mini fridge, and the pump still works, but it developed a little pinhole, and it lost a Freon, so I didn't even have to discharge it. I just had to basically take the uh, oil out of the compressor here, and I refilled it with motor oil. You can fill it with normal motor oil, 30 weight, something like that, that's fine. If you want to put in compressor oil, that's perfectly fine too. Totally up to you as long as it has a good lubricant inside to keep it going. Because the compressor sits inside this unit and it is floating in the oil inside there. It is not two separate chambers, it is all together inside here. And you have basically, just like a regular compressor, the inlet for the air going in and the outlet for the air going out. Normally this cycles the Freon back and forth, back and forth in a closed loop. But we Cut that off here and cut that off here, and now we're able to do whatever we want with it. Now, I've left these hoses on here because I still have to decide how I'm going to go with this project. And your opinions will matter as to how we do this. But let's explain what's going on here. Also, this over here, like I said, this is the inlet, the outlet. It's simple to find out which of the two is which because one will be blowing and one will be sucking in the air. So you can easily, by turning it on, you know which is which. If you do take one of these, be sure to have some professional take out the Freon for you. You don't want to just let it go out into the environment and cause a hazard. Have the Freon taken out. Many places will do it for free because some of these have R12, which is super expensive. Some of them have R134A, which is also not cheap. So a lot of places will take the Freon for free. I mean, they'll take the Freon and do the job for free because they're going to later resell the Freon. Some of them recycle it, you know? So, find a place that'll do that for you. This over here on this side is called the charge port. Now, you can do everything to this side here, or you can cut this off right here. Because normally what they do is they solder all the piping into your refrigerator, and once it's all set, then they use this port over here to fill it up with Freon, then they crimp it, cut it off, and solder it, and that's why it's all charged up. You can cut this off over here and drain out the oil inside the compressor and pump in new oil but then you're gonna to have to close this up again you can do it right through the inlet side on this side as well that's what I did because you want to drain out the oil that is in there the oil that is in there has been contaminated by the Freon the Freon and the oil and everything all works together so you want to drain out the old oil and put in new fresh clean oil that way you're gonna prolong it and make it run better so compressor oil Motor oil, either way. Compressor oil is generally around 10 to 20 weight. Motor oil is 30 weight. Uh, you can get one with the least amount of deter detergent in it if you get a motor oil and try going that route. Anyway, so when you take this out of your refrigerator, you're going to want to get the pump and the bracket as well because this will come in handy for whatever project you're going to do with it. This has, this is attached to a bracket and generally on here you're going to see that 
the compressor sits on little rubber feet. That way it can move around on here and not make a lot of noise because this will vibrate. So these little feet here allow it to move around and not make a whole lot of noise. So the bracket and all that together comes in handy for your future use. And if it has any kind of uh, condenser or, you know, actuator or any other device that goes with it, be sure to take that also. And don't cut it off. Just take it from the unit and keep it with the pump because you're going to need all those things. Some of them are bigger and they have more electronics that go with them. Uh, this one was very simple. Everything is right here in this little box that connects to it. And this, these wires went to the temperature sensor on the inside, which is what causes it to turn on and off. I just rigged it with a simple on-off switch. Simple as that. Easy peasy. No problem at all. So this allows me to turn it on and off whenever I want. Now, like I said, it depends how you're going to turn this into a given project. You can look at this many different ways. If you already have a compressor that the motor has gone bad, but you have the tank and everything else, the safety valves, the on-off switch, all that, you can automatically just fit this right onto your compressor and you have a brand new whisper quiet compressor. If you don't have any of that stuff, you're going to have to piece it all together and build your own compressor. It may cost you the same or maybe a little more than buying a brand new compressor, but it will be ultra quiet. You're not going to find a compressor out there that is as quiet as this. Uh, another way you can go is like me, basically finding all the parts and piecing it all together. That way it's simple, a little time consuming, but it's cheaper, a whole lot cheaper. Uh, you can also use this as a vacuum pump because not only is it blowing, it's also sucking. So it can work as a vacuum pump as well. Or you can leave it like this, put a simple flexible hose on here and use it as a tire inflator for your cars or whatever other things you need to inflate around the house, the garage, the shop. So it works as all of those things, tire inflator, compressor, uh, vacuum pump, whatever you want to do with it, it'll fill all those functions. So you have to decide how this raw material will work into your project. I haven't decided what to do yet. I'll tell you one thing too, I'll tell you one thing though. This unit right here says that, and keep all the, the uh, specs with it, this was on the refrigerator, I took it off and I taped it right on top. Keep all that with you because it will help you. This one will pump up to 250 PSI, so it's pretty darn strong. So the only limiting factor to this is the tank. How much pressure can the tank hold? This will put up a lot. Can the tank hold it? So right now, my first impression is I'm thinking of turning this into, um, what do you call it, a pancake compressor. Because I already have big compressors. I have 12, 18, 21 gallons. I have a lot of the big ones. But a smaller one that will run on 120 current would be very convenient to be able to just take it wherever I need to go. Very comfortable. I mean, easy to work with. The other ones are too big and bulky and you got to roll them. They're heavy as heck. This is very light, compact, lightweight. I mean, not that heavy at all. Put this on a tank, have some handles on it, and you're ready to go. So I'm thinking of doing that right now. Your opinion is important. Uh, I'm going to let you guys decide how I should go with this. Should I turn it into a tire inflator? Just leave it the way it is. Make like a handle for it. Turn it into a tire inflator. Or make it into a pancake compressor. You know, whatever tank I find, whether it's a one, five, seven gallon, something like that. I'm thinking of trying to find a propane tank. So I think propane tanks are made to hold a lot more pressure than just regular air tanks for compressors. So if I can find a propane tank that's generally three or five pound, uh, gallons, something like that, and it holds more than 120 PSI, maybe uh, you know 175, 150, 250, somewhere in there, this would be fantastic. Then all I need to do is... Uh, go on eBay and get the uh, safety valves and shut off switch and stuff like that and put this baby together and have a great super quiet pancake compressor. So let me know in the comments down below how you think I should proceed with this. Pancake compressor, big compressor, little compressor, tire inflator, what you want to see me do with this. So this is basically an intro video into I have part of the project here, how do I proceed with it from here. But 
a lot of yapping going on here. I'm talking a lot. Let me prove my point. The point being, this is ultra super quiet. I'm going to show you how quiet this is. And I'm going to show you how quiet or not quiet <laughs> the big compressor is that I have here. So watch this. And I'm going to show you how much uh, it can put out. Now look right here. You can see I'm talking and I am at uh, 77, 78, uh, 75. I'm up there. I'm, I'm talking quite a lot. You know, uh, 70 something up into the 80s if I talk a little bit much more. So let's see. Down here, uh, it fluctuates a lot, but I'm in the 70s. Now, I'm going to plug this in, and I'm going to show you how quiet it is. Plug it in. I'm holding it right next to the compressor right here. So you see, I'm uh, 77, 78, 83. Now I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to turn it on. So you saw it wasn't really that noisy at all. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm going to put it, that was right next to it. I don't know if you guys can see that. The glare is a little difficult here, uh, especially a white screen. Let me uh, see if I can change this. There we go. That's a whole lot better. Let's try that again with a black screen, and that way you guys can see better. And I'm going to move it up close to the, to the lens so you can see better, uh, you know, the noise that it makes or lack of it. I mean, you can see right next to it, it's only at 63. I'm talking right now, I'm, I'm way above it. I'm at 73. Obviously, it, there's a little bit of lag in here, but it's a whole lot quieter than I am. So that shows you right there. So I'm going to show you what the other one sounds like, the big compressor. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you what the big 125 PSI Harbor Freight tank compressor will do and what it sounds like. So let's turn it on and see what it sounds like. Anyway, so to prove my point, I have a gauge here, and I'm going to show you, since this is a compressor, it's not a fan. It doesn't blow a lot of air. It's not like I can put a piece of paper here and have it be gushing out air. That's not the way compressors work. Compressors put out consi consistent air at a certain pressure, and they build up in a tank. That's how you get a lot of pressure out of it. And this will put up a lot of consistent pressure. Like I say, it can go all the way up to 250 PSI. So... I'm going to show you this gauge right here, and I'm going to turn it back on. And even though it's not a perfect system, it will show you some of it of what it can do. Because I haven't soldered it on, it's not sealed up, some air will escape, but it will show you some of what it can do. So you can see there it went all the way up to 100 PSI, and that's with air escaping out of this side over here. It's not soldered on, it's just attached onto there. It's just a rough fit, but as you can see, it's nothing much. I can just pull it right off, just to prove the point that this is putting out a lot of air. And what you do with this is you get a flaring tool and flare this out a bit, or use a compression fitting, and attach a hose to it, and this side, taking in the air, all you got to do over here is put some kind of a, create some kind of a filter, filtration. You don't want to have air and dust particles and everything being sucked in. So any kind of foam 
or air filter or anything like that will work just fine over here to filter out the air and a hose over here and hook it up I mean you can hook this up to a hose or hook it up to a tank if this was sitting on top of the tank you just you can cut it off back over here and put a nice copper pipe going straight into the tank right through there and the tank would be right underneath it and this would be ultra quiet you can be right next to it work in your shop and it will not drive you nuts or make your ears bleed so this is a simple inexpensive way to create a ultra quiet compressor if you have an old refrigerator that you don't need anymore or you have one that has lost a charge and you were thinking of throwing it away and just left it there in the corner waiting for a day to throw it out don't throw it out do this take it out take it apart you don't need the whole rest of the case or any of that you just need the pump and the bracket and the electronics take all that apart keep it with you and when you're ready you can build it up into whatever you want to do with it air compressor vacuum pump tire inflator whatever it is you like to do so hope this helps you out hope this gives you a new perspective on how to make your own ultra quiet whisper quiet super quiet compressor and um, you know be sure to like and subscribe and ring that bell because uh, you're not going to get notified when I put out new videos and by subscribing you help me out too because that way you're telling me you like the videos I make and that's what it's all about right you tell me you like the videos I know what, what more videos to make for you guys If you don't like them I don't know what to make so I'm trying to make helpful useful DIY projects hit that subscribe button and help me out and that way you give me more more fuel to keep me going and make more videos for you alright talk to you guys soon see you on the next one bye bye for now